Layers define the look and feel of the features on the map. This includes symbols, colors, labels, rotation, uh, outlines, position offsets, when the zoom level is high to show features, whether or not features are selectable or snappable, and, uh, and other things as well. Another concept that's important to understand when considering layers is the feature class. So the feature class actually is the, the data behind the scenes. And so it represents the geometry as well as any data attributes that are associated to it. In OpenPoint, the feature classes are directly tied to a table in the map's underlying geo database. So one way to think about this is the feature classes define and store the feature data, including the geometry, and then the layers determine how the feature classes will be displayed and how you will interact with them on the map. There is usually a single feature class associated to any single layer, but one, uh, but multiple layers can point to the same feature class. So let's take a look at some of the layers in this particular map. So we have our electric map right here, and within uh, the section it has various layers such as wire, device, bank, station, etc. And so uh, just by clicking the checkboxes, let's do that for wire. You can see we unselected uh, the checkbox and all the wire uh, features went away, so we can turn that back on. Uh, same with banks. If I get a little bit closer here, we can show some. Uh, and then if I take that off, those get removed from the map. If I open up the little arrow here to the side here on bank, then you can see uh, the various symbols that are associated to this particular layer. So we have arresters, capacitors, fuses, transformers, uh, meters, etc. And if you click on any one of these, you can actually uh, get to the symbology underneath it. So the symbology represents things like the shape of the symbol, all the various colors that are associated to it, the, uh, the size of the feature on the map. Uh, there are position uh, information like and offsets that you can set. You can change the rotation. Uh, a variety of things that you can do to be able to get the symbols to be exactly how you want. Also, you can do uh, label changes as well. So we're going to shift from this list by drawing order tab over to this labeling tab. And so when I click on that, then it's showing me all the different label options that are associated uh, to the various layers. And so, for example, on wire, if I turn that on, then uh, you'll be able to see that there's some additional uh, phase information that showed up on these wires. So you can see uh, that letter A there showing up. So that was turned on. If I open that up, I can see I've got something called a label class. And the label class is what finds exactly what's going to show on a particular uh, layer's features. So if I want to change those values, I can go and right click on the label class and go into label properties and it's going to give me a variety of different things, just like with the symbols, uh, that I can do to kind of modify how that's going to work. So the first thing you're looking at here is just what data is it going to be displayed. So you can see I have, uh, I have it telling it to do the phase information right from the uh, data attributes list. And here are all the fields that you have. Basically, anything that you have in uh, the underlying feature class is then going to become available to you, and you can display that. You can also do complex um, calculations and formulas, so I can combine phase with something else. Uh, you can also change the colors. Uh, you can define things like when uh, the symbols we displayed. So we have something called the visibility range. And right now, I've said that once we go out beyond uh, 1 to 2500, then stop showing that label. As far as zooming in, if there's no limit, so as close as it can get, it'll continue to show that label. Uh, you can also do things like set the, uh, the font, the font style, the color, the size of font, um, you know, very similar to how the, the symbols work. It does also have a lot of complexity on how the labels can be displayed on the map. And so I won't go into that right now, but uh, there's a lot of uh, things that can be modified to be able to affect exactly where and how a label is displayed. And that's all controlled through the label class associated to the layer. So let's show adding a new layer to the map. So I'm going to go back to our original tab here and 
a simple way of uh, being able to add a new layer is to just copy and paste an existing one. So I'm going to copy the bank layer and then I'm going to paste it. And let's uh, give this a different name and call it bank uh, copy. Just so we can differentiate it from the other one. And I'm going to open up the little arrow there. And let's say we want these uh, meter banks to look different. So I really want these to stand out. So I clicked on that. And I'm just going to go in and I'm going to change its symbol uh, to a star. And then I'm going to make it, instead of that gray color there, I'm going to make it uh, red. And I'll change the outline color to red as well. So we've got a nice uh, you know, bright red star. In fact, let me make this a little bit bigger. I'll make the uh, size 18 point, And then I'll hit Apply. So you'll notice that I have the red star symbol, as expected, but we also still see the, uh, the square behind the scenes. And the reason is because I actually have both of those layers turned on. So I have the bank and I have the bank copy. If I take the checkbox off of bank, then we're only going to see just the, uh, the current uh, bank copy with just the red stars. Uh, consequently, I could turn off the bank copy and I can turn on the original bank feature and get back to the original uh, look that we had when we first started. And so, so the key takeaway there is that the layers um, are pointing to those feature classes. They're pointing to the real data. They aren't the real data. So if I copy um, a bank and then I change something, like say I delete out uh, this meter, if I go over to the bank copy and I turn that layer on, you're going to still see this that change or, or the lack of a meter in this particular case because the underlying data is exactly the same. So, But when I change something, like when I change the meter bank, uh, if I go back and I look at the bank uh, meter over here, then you can still see it's the original. So the format changes are different, but the data is actually the same. So uh, let's just show some other things you can do with layers as well. Let's um, try turning off the, uh, let's actually let's set the, uh, the visibility range. First, I'm going to take the stations off to make things a little bit more clear. And then I'm going to right click on the bank and go to properties. And you'll see something under the general option here that's called the visibility range. And so we talked about that a moment ago when it came to labels. So let's see that in action. So right now I have it so that once we get out beyond 5,000, then it's gonna start hiding that. So let's take a look at how that looks. If I go into the map, I can see I've got things like the meters and transformers, which are under that bank layer. And as I zoom out, uh, let's see I'm at uh, 1,622. I can still see those guys. You know, further to get out, some of these are, are getting a little bit smaller. But once I get out to 9,670, they're all gone. So if I actually want to be able to see that, I can right click and I can go to properties and I can change that out beyond scale to, let's change that to 50,000. So once I do that and say OK, now all those uh, features will then be displayed uh, because that isn't still within the, uh, the visibility range that I defined. And so, so you can do those kinds of things, those kind of queries or filters on the fly just based on zoom level. Uh, you could also do things based on uh, providing filters or queries to ArcGIS Pro and have it update the data that way. So I've got my bank layer selected here and now I'm going to click on this data uh, menu or tab at the top. And they have a something called a definition query and I have a few of those defined. So the definition queries are just ways of being able to query the what you're seeing on the map and, uh, and have it display a subset of whatever the features are. So in this particular case, I actually uh, have a way of indicating missing transformers. So uh, I'm going to select that, and you'll notice that uh, most of those transformers went away, and all, actually all the features uh, under the bank uh, layer went away, except for a few of these um, Transformers and so so the transformer has two parts. It has the symbol and there's also a record behind the scenes and uh, What this query is telling me is that some of those are actually missing So I've got the feature and that works fine But the record that represents the transformer details isn't present for whatever reason 
So the definition query allowed me to very quickly just make that selection and get to those on the map. Now I can go around and I can go and select those very easily and then make changes as needed. If I want to clear that query, then I go back to the definition query list and I select none and then everything comes back. And so another thing that can be done is uh, to create a layer that its prime, primary purpose is just to have a, a filtered view of the map. And so maybe you want to keep that on all the time. So let's turn uh, the bank uh, layer off. Let's go and turn the bank copy layer back on. And this one looks like it has a visibility range set. So I'm going to set that to none. And what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to go into uh, the properties of the layer. So I right clicked and I said properties. And I'm going to go to definition query. And this time I'm going to go and I'm just going to select um, by clicking this uh, checkbox here um, the underground transformer definition query. And so I'm going to say OK to that. And now I'm only looking at underground transformers. So these uh, blue uh, triangles are the underground transformers. So if I want to, I can normally have the bank copy turned off. Actually, let's, let's rename this too. So we can call it underground transformer. And I can normally keep that off and have the, uh, the bank feature class on, which has all these different uh, types of features underneath it. Uh, or I can just take that off. If I want to just focus on underground transformers, I can turn that on. And because it has that definition query associated to it, it will just display the, uh, the underground transformers or whatever the definition query indicated it should show.